Hello and welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Today we're going to talk about taxes. And I know people don't want to talk about it, but it's uh, very important because you can get yourself into some serious trouble. Right over here I have a post that came out uh, over a year ago. And I, I don't know if it's real or if it's fake, but it, it, was, it was a pretty, pretty popular post. Pretty much this a kid spoke about how he put in $5,000 and it went all the way up to $880,000 in December of 2017. And then anyone that's been in cryptocurrency for a while knows that just a month later in the year 2018, now January 2018, the whole market crashed. So I guess you would say it's okay, he doesn't owe any money. But this guy actually uh, screwed himself because what happened was uh, to get from 5K, to eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars, he didn't just buy a buy one one cryptocurrency, for example, Bitcoin, and just hold it. He was trading along the way. So, just to give you an example, if someone bought five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, held it, and it just went up to eight hundred and eighty thousand k, and they didn't sell it, they don't owe any tax. It could go into the next year. They still didn't sell it. They don't owe any tax. But if someone bought five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and it went all up, all the way up to $880,000. And then in December of 2017, right before the new year, they traded their Bitcoin for Ethereum. That counts as a taxable event. And when I first learned about this, I was, I was pretty upset. It didn't make any sense to me. And I started looking into all these rules. I mean, if you trade something for something that's similar, why would it be taxable? So I looked into it and the rule, it's called a 1031 like kind exchange. It used to be pretty broad what it, what it covered. You know, it never, there was never a final answer. But now, if you look up the rule under the IRS, it only applies to real estate. So if you sell real estate um, to buy another real estate property, or I guess trade real estate for real estate, it's a non-taxable event because um, it's a like kind exchange, but that does not apply with cryptocurrency. So in the end of the day, this this uh, this kid, he went from 5,000 to 880,000 and he made trades along the way. So technically, he is liable to pay tax on a $875,000 profit. But what happened, as everyone knows, just a month later in January, it crashed and he he lost all that money. So now he doesn't even have money to pay the tax. But you know what? He has to pay it. A lot of people will say, it's okay. They'll never catch me. They can't catch me. I wouldn't play that game. It's very dangerous because this was uh, this was back in, let's see, in June. Uh, they sent out, the IRS sent out letters because they were able to get Coinbase to hand over user data. And as you can see from their notice, the court ordered Coinbase to provide taxpayer ID, name, birth date, address, and historical transaction records for certain high tra higher transaction transacting customers during the 2013 to 2015 period. So they have access to all these records. And I guess a lot of people might be watching this and saying, yeah, but it's okay. I bought in 2016. I bought in 2017. If they got it in 2013 to 2015, what makes you think they can't get it? For the years after and also maybe you can say oh i was on another exchange if it happened to coinbase it could happen to another exchange and then this is more recently this just came out uh, the irs um, they're saying they discovered a new way to catch cryptocurrency tax evaders i don't know if this is actually true you know they say in the article we have tools in place that we didn't have six months or a year ago i don't know what these tools are and they're saying they can catch, you know, I don't know if they actually can or if they're just trying to scare you. And at the bottom, um, you can see there's a tweet from this, from this woman uh, who goes by the crypto tax girl. And she writes, per Judith McNamara of the IRS, based on new data that the IRS has, it will likely be sending out more audit notices soon in addition to the initial 10,000 letter campaign that was sent out in August. Um, and this girl, she's actually uh, pretty popular. Uh, here is her YouTube channel. Her name is Laura Walter. She's known as the Crypto Tax Girl. Maybe somewhere you can go uh, if you had any advice. Again, um, me, myself, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not here giving you any advice. I would recommend going to a licensed CPA if you had any specific questions about your case. And there, 
at first, you know, there weren't strict rules, but the IRS actually issued official guidelines. And if you want to look at them in a very clear, you know, um, clear order, go to the Coinbase website. And right on Coin Coinbase, they answer all the questions for you. And they have right here, what is taxable? So selling crypto for cash. That we that we pretty much know. You know, if you buy Bitcoin uh, for ten dollars and it goes up to twenty dollars and you sell it for cash, you know you have to pay. But then some other things we didn't really know about, um, which is kind of annoying, I must admit, is that paying for goods or services is also taxable. So if you bought ten dollars worth of Bitcoin and it went up to twenty dollars and you took those twenty dollars and you bought, let's say, as it says right here, pizza. You have to pay tax on on the Bitcoin, which is kind of crazy. And I don't know if this is the IRS on purpose trying to prevent people from adopting cryptocurrency, because who wants to spend cryptocurrency when you know you're going to be taxed on it? And then, of course, as we just mentioned, from one crypto to another. So if you buy uh, one Ethereum, you know, let's say you spend fifty dollars on uh, Ethereum, and it goes up to two hundred dollars, and then you take the Ethereum and trade it for Ripple or XRP, you now have to pay a tax on that gain. Also, people that mine, that mine Bitcoin, they have to pay. And also, if you're getting paid, let's say for your job or whatever it is, if someone pays you in Bitcoin, it's almost it's like your income. You have to pay tax on it. So, what are things you don't have to pay tax on? They're right here. So, donating crypto to a qualified tax exempt charity or nonprofit buying crypto with cash and holding it. I mean, this is the, the simplest one and we call these guys hodlers. You just buy crypto, you don't change it, you don't uh, exchange it for anything else, you don't trade, you just buy, hold. You don't pay any tax until the day you either trade it for another cryptocurrency or sell it for cash. And then obviously just transferring between wallet to wallet. So if you have, um, let's say Monero, and you just transfer it from one wallet to another wallet, there was no actual transaction. You don't owe any tax on that. And uh, lastly, it says over here, transferring crypto between Coinbase accounts or from an external wallet to a Coinbase account. So I know this is very confusing. Many people might be in the situation where they were trading throughout 2017 with these huge gains and they didn't even know. And then they lost it all in 2018, and now they're liable to pay a tax in 2017. But there is good news. Just as there is a tax that you had to pay in 2017 if you were trading, in 2018, you can also write off the losses. So you can, uh, you know, you might have to pay tax, but you also can write off losses. And uh, a nice website over here, uh, CryptoTrader, uh, CryptoTrader.tax, it lets you just upload all of your files, whether it's from Binance or Coinbase or um, any exchange really, it lets you upload it and then it calculates everything for you. Um, very neat. And you could bring that to, I guess, to like a, an accountant or a CPA and they can look it over for you. So uh, I'll put uh, I'll put some links in the, in the description box for these resources so you could check them out yourself. And again, I know it's very frustrating, especially for people who are just finding out about this now, but you don't want to get yourself into big trouble later. So it's much better to take care of it now, you know, maybe uh, meet with an accountant or CPA, get some advice. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to know how you feel about this or where you think this is moving in the future. Do you think the rules will always be like this or will they eventually change? I'd like to hear from you. And again, I want to thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.